Okay, in this video I am continuing our discussion of cognitive learning theory and its connection with uh, quality in learning design. Now, in this video, I have here a novice learner that is watching a um, e-learning course, and in this um, case, this e-learning course is about uh, learning to diagnose uh, patients with chest pain. Now, this novice learner doesn't know anything at all about chest pain and is starting to learn some chunks of, of information about what a patient with chest pain may look like. So the, the novice learner is learning about that this is a 42-year-old with chest pain that's radiating to the left arm and has history of smoking. Now, so we have here, the, pay, um, the person is paying attention to uh, this information and you can see that we have that um, the student is placing in working memory uh, four different chunks of information. It's a 42 year old with chest pain uh, and a history of smoking and the pain is radiating to the left arm. So four chunks of information um, the learner will be able to hold in the working memory. But now we're going to make things a little bit more complex. We're going to add more chunks of, of data to this, to this information. Remember, working memory is very finite and can hold seven plus or minus two data points at any given time, whether they're digits or other chunks of data. So again, this is getting complicated. So we're adding to this that um, the learner is, is also hearing that the patient on the screen is diaphoretic and has EKG changes, um, etc. We can continue to add points that um, the patient's complaining of, of uh, um, heaviness in the chest and the, um, the patient said this has happened uh, three times before and it tends to get worse with exercise, etc., etc. So we could literally add dozens of data points for this novice and now the novice's working memory is overloaded because of the increased intrinsic load of the data that we are putting in, in front of him. Now contrast that with an expert. The working memory of a novice and an expert has the exact same capacity. Every single human being on the planet can hold seven plus or minus two um, chunks of information in the working memory if, if they have normal cognition. So the working memory does not get expanded with an expert um, when you become an expert. However, what an expert has is previously developed schema in containing lots of information about, in this case, acute coronary syndrome. So the expert actually loads the schema of it, all the information that they have about a patient uh, presenting with acute coronary syndrome into their working memory and uses that schema as one chunk of data that can be connected with all the little chunks that um, the expert is seeing in the uh, information that is being delivered through the e-learning course. So um, the expert is finding matches and is able to process the information much more efficiently because the schema is able to connect, for, create connections between dozens and dozens of variable points and combine them into one single variable point. So the major difference between the novice and the expert, again, is not the fact that they have increased working memory capacity, but they're able to use their working memory capacity much more efficiently because of the existence of schema, which provides a, a model for them to connect um, data points onto and process a whole bunch of data points as one single data point. 